Welcome back to CNN 10. Today we're going to be taking a blast from the past and looking at the top stories from the 1970s. Our journey begins in 1970 in the USA. The Beatles were a very popular music group during the mid to late 1900s, releasing songs such as Hey Jude, Here Comes the Sun, Don't Let Me Down, Come Together, and many more. Despite their success, there have been rumors circulating since 1968 that there was going to be a split. It is now known that in 1969, John Lennon privately informed the rest of the group he was leaving, but the split was not made public until April of 1970 when Paul McCartney left. There were many reasons for the split, including the death of their manager in 1966 and the conflict between the members of the band. The news saddened fans nationwide, but the four later went on to produce solo albums. The next step on our 70s throwback tour is Munich, Germany, during the Munich Olympic Massacre. On September 5, 1972, Palestinian members of the Black September terrorist group scaled the fence surrounding the Olympic Village disguised as athletes. They went inside and asked two coaches where they could find the rooms of the Israeli athletes. One of the coaches resisted and was shot dead. The terrorists gathered hostages into one of the hotel rooms, and as one of the athletes tried to resist, he was shot and his body was left as a warning to the other captives. The terrorists demanded the liberation of over 200 Palestinians locked away in Israeli prisons along with the release of other terrorist groups in Europe and a plane to safely transport them back to the Middle East. At the airport, the police had planned an ambush, but their officers weren't experienced or provided proper weapons. Although none died, it didn't go as planned and resulted in a gun down with several casualties. The entire event resulted in a death toll of 11 Israeli athletes, one Munich policeman, and five Black September terrorist members. The three gunmen were captured and most likely killed. It's reminding me. Okay. Our 70s journey continues with the impeachment process of Richard Nixon. This process began on February 6, 1974 in Washington, D.C. The impeachment process of Richard Nixon began when the House of Representatives decided to investigate to see if there's enough evidence to impeach him. He was accused of high crimes and misdemeanors, most of which were related to the Watergate scandal. This investigation began one year after there was a break-in at the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate offices, and the Nixon administration had been trying to cover up its involvement since. A few mo months later, Edited transcripts of many Watergate-related conversations from the Nixon White House tapes were released to the public. When the committee pressed for full tapes, Nixon refused until he was eventually forced to comply. After receiving the tapes, the Supreme Court approved three different articles of impeachment against Nixon, obstruction of justice, abuse of power, and contempt of Congress. Upon hearing this, he then resigned from office before being formally impeached by the government. He is one of the only three U.S. presidents to ever have impeachment charges written against him. The entire ordeal ended on August 9, 1974. Next up on our 70s journey is the Vietnam War. The Vietnam War began on November 1st, 1955, and was fought in Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. The war started with Ho Chi Minh, a Vietnam native who moved to France, Russia, and China under fake names for almost 30 years before returning to his home country in 1940. Throughout this time, he learned communism by joining the French Communist Party in 1920 and through China and the USSR. When he returned, he formed the Viet Minh, or Independent Vietnam. The Viet Minh took advantage of World War II and the damage caused by it. In 1945, the Viet Minh took over Hanoi, and Ho Chi Minh became the new leader of the democratic state of Vietnam. Because France had control of the southern part of Vietnam, there was a civil war between the Communist North and the Anti-Communist South, also known as the Vietnam War. The U.S. then became involved. The war ended in 1976 with the U.S. withdrawal of troops, and Vietnam became unified under communist rule. But Ho Chi Minh didn't live to see this. He died in 1969, but the city of Saigon was renamed Ho Chi Minh, city ever since. And as for the events in the 70s, Nixon ordered the expansion of the war in, into Cambodia with several college protests following in 1970. Finally in 1973, the final U.S. troops left Vietnam. Eventually in 1982, the Vietnam War Memorial was placed at the National Mall of Honor and the soldiers who risked their lives. The next stop on our 70s journey is a deadly earthquake. This took place on July 28, 1976 in Tongshan, China. It was the deadliest earthquake in the 1970s, taking place at 3.42 in the morning in Tongshan, China. It was a magnitude of 7.6 and had an estimated death toll of 250. Next up on our 70s tour is Star Wars. The franchise began on May 25th, 1977 with the release of its first movie, The New Hope. Before Star Wars, there, was, there were several movies from the 70s before it, like Jaws, Rocky, and The Godfather, with Jaws with the highest net worth of the time. When Star Wars came out, it had made $775 million just with its time in the theaters. Imagine how many copies that sold. Directed by George Lucas, it was a big hit that will eventually have three prequels plus five more, adding up to nine in total up to date. 
Next up on our 70s tour is the Jonestown Massacre. The Jonestown Massacre occurred on November 18, 1978 in Jonestown, Kiwana. <clears throat> the Jonestown Massacre was a mass murder-suicide of the members of the People Temple, a cult based in California. Members believed that moving to the church would save them in the event of a nuclear holocaust. The founder of the original church, Jim Jones, then went on to open multiple services across the state. He had thousands of followers, and as well as politically respected friends, making him a respected churchman. Although the church was active in many humanitarian causes, the treatment of the followers was often less than decent. Members were regularly beaten, humiliated, brainwashed, or blackmailed. Many members were worried that if they left, they would be rounded up and slaughtered, so they stayed with the church. However, the press started asking questions, so Jones moved with several of his followers to a compound in Jonestown. A Senate member later went to check on their activity and found that m many of the members were anxious to get back to the U.S. During an attempt to take them home, the other cult members shot at them, killing five and wounding eleven. Jones, pushed to his limit, decided to execute his revolutionary suicide plan. They used a fruit drink with cyanide in it to kill babies, women, and other adults. Others died of gunshots. Fewer than 100 members escaped with their lives, causing the death of 900 people, a third of whom were under the age of 17. Next up, we have the nuclear accident at Three Mile Island. This took place on March 28, 1979 in the Londonderry Township, Pennsylvania. The nuclear accident at Three Mile Island was the worst nuclear accident in U.S. history, which released nuclear gases into the air, causing people to evacuate the surrounding area. Also, no new nu nuclear power plants were built in the U.S. to this day because of the accident. The, this event mainly happened because the water pump that was designed to keep the radioactive fuel cool malfunctioned, so the fuel overheated. Officials didn't notice the problem, so they took actions that made the situation worse. The metal container storing the gas eventually melted and released the gas into the air. This is noticeable by the steam coming out of the top. This event was soon solved three days later. And finally, to conclude our 70s journey is the Iran hostage crisis. This took place from November 4th, 1979 to January 21st, 1981 and happened in Iran. On November 4th, 1979, a group of Iranian students took more than 60 American hostages from the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. This is their way of saying that they wanted American interference in Iranian affairs to end, as well as to raise an international profile of their revolution's leader. However, the students left their hostages free the following January, shortly after the President Ronald Reagan gave an inaugural speech. Are the two related? We thank you for joining us for our nostalgia of the 1970s, and we hope that you'll come back soon for today's top stories and breaking news. Thank you. This is CNN 10. Anybody who is coming be warned you will be slaughtered. <laughs> like he'll live. <laughs> he looks That's a blue guy. Cardi goes, kill him. <laughs> ready. We're never gonna be ready. That's a blooper. I'm not ready. I'm never, I'm never gonna, gonna be ready. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs>